Welcome, everybody. We are back. We are in the crypt, and we are here for another amazing interview. And I'm excited to do this one because, as you guys know, there's a couple topics I really love talking about. And one of them is true crime, is definitely one of them, as you guys well know. And the guest I have on is... I've had him on before, guys, and I'm really excited to get him back on. We're going to be doing kind of an update video this time. We're going to be talking about cases that I'm very passionate about, as you guys know. So we're going to be talking and getting an update on the Zodiac case, on the David Crowley case, and on the Cooper case. So this is going to be a great show covering lots of topics, and I'm really excited to see uh, what my guest has found out and where the, their research is taking them. And that way we can give you guys an update too, because I'm curious too uh, to find out what's going on. Because these cases, as you guys know, are always changing. They're always evolving. There's more information people are finding. So I'm really excited to do this for you guys. feels great to be back on video. I've been do concentrating on radio for the last couple of months. I was working on a presentation uh, for the Funnel 2 conference. So I was learning that. That took a lot of my time. So it feels great to be back here on YouTube, talking to you guys on video. So let's go ahead and get my guest on here, and uh, we're going to get this show going here. Welcome, Ross. I'm so excited to have you. Ross from Planet X Filmworks. I've had you on before. It was a great interview. Lots of great information. How are you doing, my friend? Doing great, man. Glad to be back. Oh, definitely. So what is? I'm so excited to get some updates from you. I know I chat with you off uh, air a lot. And you're really big into these cases. So, I mean, I've learned so much from your channel. I'm going to make sure I leave a link in that, Ross, for you in the bottom in the description. Please, guys, check out Ross's channel if you're looking into these uh, cases. He's the guy to go and look at, I'm telling you. So, I'm tell I'm excited. Let's start off where I want to start. Let's go Zodiac. What is? Can you give people a little... Maybe there's somebody, Ross, that has not even heard of the Zodiac. I mean, so yeah. can you give them a little bit of an update, the research you're doing, and let's just dive into what you found out. Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the best way to get up on my on, you know, my personal research is my series, The Zodiac Files, which is on my channel, as Rick just said, youtube.com slash planet X film. Um, if you've literally never heard of this case. So the Zodiac is an um, unsolved American serial killer mystery took place in Northern California from late 1968 to 1969. That's when the actual canonical murder crimes took place all of which are unsolved. And then the Zodiac was obsessed with his own ego and his uh, relationship with the media hype. So he was writing letters much like uh, Jack the Ripper. I think we made this comparison last time. They call Zodiac the American Jack the Ripper. However, Zodiac is much more complicated because in addition to writing letters to the media and taunting the police, he wrote three part ciphers, uh, two of which remain unbroken to this day, one of which was was cracked by a computer science team a few years ago, David Aranchak and the boys and his team. Uh, they were featured in the History Channel show Hunting, the, Hunting for the Zodiac. Um, so um, there's so many crazy things that happened with it. it it's difficult to where you want to jump in. But uh, as, uh, as Rick and I were talking about last time, during one of these crimes. So two of his victims survived, um, one of which Michael Maju was shot several times in the, in the face and shot several times at nighttime with a flashlight in his face. So you can't really get a great description from him. Uh, the other attack, which occurred during the daylight, September 27th, 1969, Zodiac was wearing a handmade executioner's hood with a bib with his cross, infamous cross circle logo on his chest. Yeah, that's what I, everybody knows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, everybody so knows you, that picture. Yep. Yeah, so if you've seen the, the the Robert Graysmith picture that uh, Rick and I were talking about last time, Graysmith was actually a cartoonist who worked at the Chronicle. Um, he was there when some of the letters came in. All of this is, um, you know, uh, basically reimagined in uh, Dave Fincher's film Zodiac, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Robert Downey Jr. Um, granted, Gray Smith and Paul Avery didn't know each other and they're best friends in the movie, so that's another thing. We cover that in some of the videos on my channel. Uh, but other than that, you know, as far as um, the look of the time and the, what they're wearing, what the victims are wearing, the reconstructions of the murder scenes, all of that is, uh, is pretty highly accurate in the film. Um, as Rick and I covered last time, my series actually focuses on the Zodiac, what's known as the Zodiac pre-crimes or non-canonicals, which are 
very, 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 very similar crimes to mm -hmm. the four canonical crimes in Northern California. However, they take place in Southern California. Uh, so that, that that's everywhere from San Diego to Oceanside to Riverside. Uh, and that one is uh, slightly mentioned in the in the film. That's 1996. The Sherry Joe, ba what I call the Sherry Joe Bates mystery, Sher Sherry Josephine Bates. Um, that one's interesting, right, Rick? Because that is are, interesting. It is are really 50 50 on that one. They really say like Zodiac definitely did it. There was a there was a confession letter and other people are like. Does it make sense for this like forty-year-old like overweight man to be in this library with all these like college kids? So the best way you can find out about that one, if Rick can link it in, Zodiac Files episode three, the Sherry Joe Bates mystery. That's my most recent episode, um, and I feel that it's the most comprehensive deep dive into the Riverside activity case. Um, quite frankly, I'm a bit surprised at some of you internet people because of all the things that I corrected in that episode, such as. Wing Walker boots not being found at the scene of the crime, the the desktop poem actually being a desk bottom poem, and Sherry being uh, sliced 42 times or 44 times, whatever it is you people keep keep repeating. All of that is totally inaccurate, and that and all those inaccuracies are outlined in my video. I really thought deep down in my soul, Rick, when I drop this, it's going to totally correct the record, and everyone's going to get this one right now, and then people are still continuing to like just repeat those misnomers over and over wow. again. Wow, yeah. Drives me insane. I really thought that I nailed it out of the park, and uh, it's quite funny. It's like, I don't know if you people just haven't seen my video or what, but uh, whatever else Rick has, if you want to just jump in on, yeah, you know, the canonicals or anything else on Zodiac, I will give you what I got. Well, it's it's crazy. Like, I, it's really surprising, like you said, that people haven't. I hope they check out your videos because they're, they're amazing, and mm -hmm. they're really going to, like, answer a lot of... Uh, questions i think that people are gonna have like mm. because it's really interesting like when i like i never i find it fascinating when when you you break those down because i'm I, it makes you just wonder is it really something going on there like was it was it was it him or her i mean i it's really interesting and uh so i hope people do check it out now like zodiac's been going on for so long like and anytime i can watch a video on it or a documentary or anything i'm always hungry to get new information like is there are they is there are they moving forward on this case at all ross like is there any are they kind of at a stalemate or what? yeah 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 it's an interesting question right where 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 is law enforcement at on the zodiac yeah. case because they couldn't with the powers of the cia the fbi the military law enforcement they couldn't crack his three ciphers back right. in 69 um then then much much i think it was 2018 when david ranchak uh cracked uh i don't know if i mentioned his channel but um i'll send you some of his videos uh definitely check out david series it's let's crack the zodiac and he does a lot more he's considered the cipher expert um, he does a lot with, you know, with, with the ciphers and, and other references to Zodiac and pop culture and vice versa. Essentially, you have Zodiac making all these movie references, comic book references, things of that nature. And then as far as art imitating life later on, you have all these movies influenced by the Zodiac, such as the Riddler character in the recent right. Batman movie. Uh, he's, he, he's right. He writes ciphers and he writes that my secret friend card, which is like Zodiac secret pal card from the real case. So, um, it, it, it's quite interesting. You know what I mean? You have this, this lunatic monster who's obsessed with comic books and movies. And then later on, it's like those movies start obsessing over him. And like you said, it's a 50 year old case yet. You just had a movie that dropped last year, right? With, right. with a character based on Zodiac. Yep. So in a sense, he's still with us, which is what he always wanted because he's obsessed with his own ego and the media hype. Now, where are they at on the on the Zodiac case? Well, it's interesting, right? Because um, it's this unsolved cold case. Um, as Rick probably knows, you know, being a, 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 a interest in true, true crime, um, there's no uh, 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 statute, you know, statute expiration in in the United States on right. murder. Yeah. So if I committed a hundred a murder a hundred years ago, I'm still guilty for it now. It's not like it just goes away or they throw it away or, or any of those things. One thing that really drives me nuts about that is like the Sherry Joe Bates cold case because I don't know how much we went into it last time, but yeah, people think there's been been a lot of mistakes uh, in that case and just weird things that have happened. I think right. Yeah. Some of them last time with you, but um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it is an open case. Uh, it'd be difficult to say, um, you know, uh, are they actively, uh, you know, investigating it? We don't really know. Um, I think if they have anything that's like a smoking gun, you know, well, let me preface by saying this. Okay. Um, there's a lot of not everything law enforcement has is publicly released on Zodiac. So they it's safe to say they have quite a bit of material that we just don't know whether that's evidence at crime scenes, whether that's other things, maybe letters. It's been theorized and hypothesized. There's, there's quite a few things that aren't public to the general public that we just don't know. So it's, it's difficult. We'd have to kind of speculate where they're at in their investigation. Um, it is open. I think the FBI has made a couple statements on it. Like it's a it's an open cold case, but not one that they're actively investigating. I can tell you flat out with D.B. Cooper, the FBI a few years back said that they're done with it. They even made a statement to people who researched the case. I think it was the scientist Tom K who came out with the particles on the tie breakthrough that even if they had Cooper, if they had a confession, if they had him dead to rights, he'd be like a 90 year old man and they simply weren't gonna waste resources on prosecuting him. Granted, what's the difference between Zodiac and Cooper? Zodiac murdered a bunch of people. Exactly. Cooper was just some yeah. guy that jumped out of a plane with a parachute. So with Cooper, they weren't even gonna do it. With Zodiac, you'd think um, if they had something, I guess the big question about it would be DNA. Where are we at on Zodiac's DNA? I was just gonna ask you that. <laughs> I was yeah. just gonna ask yeah. you. Yeah, so it's it's weird, Rick, because, you know, he writes all these letters, he licks all these stamps, and um, uh, he sends them the letters. So they have a few things. Now, at Lake Berryessa, Rick probably knows a lot of the movie. He was wearing gloves. So they do have that rope. They do they do have everything that was at, you know, the blanket that Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard were laying on. But the problem is, is when they rescued um, Brian, uh, I think it's Dennis Land, the park ranger. Mm -hmm. He comes and takes the blanket and moves it. So he actually moved the murder scene. A lot of uh, you know the crime scene. A lot of people have a a big problem with that. You know what I mean? So this is Zodiac, right? It's this constant bullcrap with Zodiac, right, Rick? It's like okay, you have the stuff from the crime scene, but it was moved, and you have a bunch of other people touching it, much like those Zodiac letters. So right. yeah, a, a couple years back, there was an announcement that. They, this is what they say. They say they've extracted a partial DNA profile of Zodiac. And essentially what that means is they can negate suspects with it, but I don't know if they can actually 100% match someone copy for copy. You know what I'm saying? So okay. yeah. people who have a suspect like Arthur Lee Allen, Robert Graysmith's uh, suspect from the yellow cover book Zodiac, um, you know... I'm sorry, guys, but Alan was Alan wasn't a match on fingerprints, and I th believe the other thing they have on Zodiac is what they call a a palm print. It's like you know when you when you take a pen and you you rest your hand on the piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they kind of have they kind of have that from when he was writing. So they have that partial palm print thingy. I'm not a forensic expert, sorry guys. <laughs> uh, and they have uh, the partial Zodiac, uh, the partial DNA profile. So. That's the problem. A lot of the mainstream suspects have been uh, shot down because of that. Now, a couple years back, they tell us that they've lifted DNA from the stamp. And then it, they come back and tell us that it's someone that couldn't be Zodiac. So what does couldn't be Zodiac mean? Well, for one, it was from the front of the stamp, not the back, which is where someone would have licked it back. Exactly. Down. Yeah, I was just thinking that. And I think we discussed this last time, but, you know, they said certain populations of people back then, late 60s, uh, let's say you were in a corporate environment, like you were someone who dealt with a lot of um, uh, mailing letters at your job, like you were some kind of like mailroom person or something like that. Uh, they had like these little like water things with a sponge where they dip the sponge in the water just so you don't have to lick like 5,000 envelopes a day because that'd be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So some people have used that explanation like, well, how do we even know Zodiac licked the stamp? He could have just used the water. And we don't know, right? It's all speculation. But um, what they come back with is uh, that it was someone who could not have been the Zodiac. So I would, earlier on, I was speaking about people who saw Zodiac. Yep, yep. Hartnell saw him under the mask. 
Majot saw him at night with a flashlight in his face. But we didn't talk about the Robbins kids and Officer Falk, who at uh, I'm actually going up here very soon. I'm going to try to maybe do a little vlog for you guys or something. Cool. Uh, but I'm headed up to Washington Street and Cherry, where Paul Stein was shot. I believe that's October 7th, or I think it's October 8th, 1969. That is um, the last known canonical crime of the Zodiac downtown, downtown San Francisco, the Presidio, uh, right outside the Presidio Park. So he takes the taxi ride. You know, you know this movie scene, Rick, I'm assuming. He oh, takes yeah. the taxi ride with Stein, shoots him in the back of the head. He has the weird cloth in his hand. He gets out. The Robin kid, the Robin's kids see him from the window across the street, wiping down the cab. Um... He bounces out. Uh, Falk comes flying up with his partner, pulls up to him, questions him. Unfortunately, I don't know if I went into this last time, it went out on the police radio that it was a black male, which it obviously wasn't. No one really knows where that came from. It's the late 60s. Possible racism. You guys can speculate. Yeah, that's really so, weird, eh, how that went out. I always found that weird. That blew the entire case, because yeah. if you would have had a white male with horn rim glasses and a widow's peak, you would have stopped him right then and there, and the five minutes after he killed Paul Stein, he would have got him, and none of us would be here now. So, uh, you know, it'd be more like a David Berkowitz, Son of Sam thing, where they actually got the guy. So, Falk sees him. Some people have problems with Falk's description, because he changes his story a couple times. It kind of got swept under the rug. Felk doesn't really... Um, you can see his rendition of the story and the, his name was... Uh, or what, This is the Zodiac Speaking documentary. It's on Tom's Boyd channel. And uh, I think the documentary is... His name was Arthur Lee Allen. So the, those were the interviews with all the uh, detectives and the police guys and stuff like that. And Falk is on there. He gives his story. People have said that he's wavered in, in his renditions of the, of the story. So... Falk sees him face to face, questions him. Have you seen anybody suspicious? He says, yeah, I saw a gun, a guy waving a gun that way. He ran off. So they take off trying to catch the guy. Little right. did they, know, they probably just questioned the guy and let him walk free. Once he gets into Presidio, I was just looking at the Presidio on Google Maps. It's freaking huge, man. So are you really going to be able to go in there at night on a foggy San Francisco night, be able to find one guy that probably is like, thousands of miles away by then right, you know right. who knows that's that that's the whole thing so when they say that they got dna from someone uh who couldn't have been the zodiac well then i'm assuming that we're all assuming that it means it couldn't have been from an adult white male so it could have been from like someone who's a non-white non-caucasian person in which case it's probably not the zodiac probably just somebody who handled the letter like at the mail you know, the post office or wherever the office where the letters landed because they went to the Chronicle and they went to different places um, or maybe like a child or something like that. I don't even know if you can analyze that by DNA. Again, guys, I'm not a scientist, so excuse me. <laughs> um, but that's pretty that's pretty much where they at. They, they come out a couple of years ago, say they have a DNA sample, and then they announce that it was someone who could not have been the Zodiac. So very that's in, yeah, well. very interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, I got a question, and this is something I've always – I wanted to ask you, and I think I don't think I asked you this in the last time I had you on. So I'm glad that I kind of thought of this now. Mm -hmm. Um, What I find weird, Ross, about this case is that after all of these years that is there anybody that's ever has anyone come forward? I can't find anything where anyone's ever come forward claiming they were Zodiac, uh, knew the Zodiac like is because usually with time in a case, somebody along the way starts talking or something like something gets yep. revealed and i find with a few of the cases i'm looking into which the cases we're going to be talking about uh in in, in this interview with the david mm -hmm. crowley case mm -hmm. i find this really weird that nobody's talking and and nobody's yeah. ever what do you i just want your thoughts on that i just to me i find it weird i mean so i just want your uh thoughts my biggest problem is so I have a research team now that's actually helping me with the series. So I have access to basically all the articles and a bunch of other things. And I do know quite a few things about the case now that I can't say publicly because I've been sworn to secrecy. Um, there are people who have claimed to be the Zodiac. There are tons of people who have claimed to be to claim to know the Zodiac. 
every single one of them has been an idiot and has had absolutely <laughs> no proof. For, I mean, dude, there's been 900 deathbed confessions of D.B. Cooper, you know. That's true. Yep. That one's, that one's kind of cool, right? He's this badass folk hero that got away with 200K and, and you know, everybody respects that guy. Who wants to go around claiming they were the Zodiac because he's a piece of crap? Now, there's been mentally unstable people that have done it. Um, well, I mean, I guess the earliest one that you would go to um, is, and I know you had Drew Beeson on your channel. Yep, is great Don interview. Cheney. You remember when they talked to Don Cheney in the movie? He's kind of the first guy that comes forward and brings forth Arthur Lee Allen. But then, under scrutiny, Arthur Lee Allen falls apart rather quickly. And then you start looking at Don Cheney, like, why did he bring this guy forward? And then you start to see that the suspect profile of Don Cheney matches to what the Zodiac was way better than Arthur Lee Allen does. That's true. You know what I mean? So yep. um, I, I think you did. I, I, did you get to read uh, Sighting It on the Zodiac? Yes, uh, yes. Reason. So that was, yeah, that was... That was interesting to me because when I uh, Drew was my second guest on my interview series and I found him through his Zodcast, everybody go subscribe to the Drew Beeson channel on YouTube. He, he's does, he knows every case, dude. That guy's a true crime genius. But, um, you know, that was kind of – Don Cheney was interesting for me because he was the first newer suspect that I had heard of. Granted, he's – you know, he interjects himself in the Zodiac case. So I guess what you would come to is – where do you place the Zodiac? Do you place him as a lone person that would uh, never speak of this to anyone, a la like a D.B. Cooper? Or would you put him as like his ego is so big, he's like a Don Cheney, and he's going to try to interject himself into the case, assuming that he's going to outsmart law enforcement and they're never going to figure out that he interjected himself in the case. That's the issue with, with, with Don Cheney. Like, if it's somebody who is involved in the case... Well, then the Zodiac is Don Cheney. My whole thing is, like, I can't picture the Zodiac going on Zodiac documentaries and talking about himself pretending not to be the Zodiac. Like, that'd be insane to me. Yep. If Don yep. Cheney pulled that off, then he's the, a master criminal. You know what I mean? And, and maybe he did. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm saying he's probably one of the strongest suspects. It's just my whole thing is what I'm going to interject is what my Zodiac theory is. And I don't know how deep I went into it in the last show, but... Personally, I think he's a cult member. If he was a member of, like, the Church of Satan or the pro the Process Church of the Final Judgment, which were the, the massive, you know, uh, occultism and Satanism, they saw this massive rise in the 60s, especially in Northern California. You know, if he's, like, a, a member of the Church of Satan, but what people forget is with the Antoine LaVey vein of, of, of Satanism, it's not worship of Satan. It's worship of self. So when I read exactly. Zodiac's writings, what I see is self-worship. In a, in, in, you know, maybe he's conscious of all these other occult, uh, occultic, demonic entities such as Lucifer and Baphomet and these other demons that these satanic sects worship. But Zodiac's ego is massive. Maybe Zodiac worships himself on a higher level than he wor worships Satan. So when you hear that Aleister Crowley, do what thou wilt, and Zodiac says... I'm collecting slaves for the afterlife, and if you kill me, I'll just go to paradise, and all and everybody I've murdered will be my slave in paradise. It sounds very much like self worship to me. Oh, you know, for sure, you know? yeah. So that's my personal theory. I don't push it overly hard, and I, I do have a, a person of interest. We can we can get into that later if you care, care to hear. You know, I would I would love to hear it actually. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I I'm kind of on that level of, of newer suspects now. Where else are, you know, you asked me about uh, people claiming to be Zodiac or people claiming they knew the Zodiac. Yep. Well, you know, you have that first one, which is Don Cheney, which is what started all the Arthur Lee Allen bullshit. Yep. Um, most recently, there's this, there's, uh, okay, let's talk about the case breakers real quick, because these guys are idiots. Me and Eric Euless <laughs> roasted them on my, my recent uh, <laughs> D.B. Cooper episode. Go check that guy's out. Uh, Cooper Chronicles Volume 2 with Eric Euless. This guy, Thomas Colbert. I don't want to crap on him too hard because he did do some good things for the D.B. Cooper case. He got the FOIA request into the FBI, and that's what released all the 302 files, which are what FBI files are in the D.B. Cooper case. Other than that, those guys have done some ridiculous bull crap, and even though their, their D.B. Cooper suspect wasn't really good, uh, I don't know if you caught the... Uh, db cooper uh where where are you documentary on netflix oh uh, yeah yo, yeah yep 
So Rack Straw was down here in San Diego where I'm at. He's, he's, he's passed away since. And they were pulling up on this guy at his boat every day, harassing him after he said, like, dude, I'm not D.B. Cooper. Leave me alone. For one, that was ridiculous. They kind of harassed that guy. I, I, I wish I had known about Rack Straw because I swear to God I would have got him on my YouTube channel and I would have been like, dude, just tell us you're not D.B. Cooper and shut this whole case breaker bull crap down. You know what I mean? That's that's what I would have did with Rackstraw. I wouldn't have harassed him about D.B. Cooper. That's insane. But they have an even worse suspect in another case, which is the case we're talking about right now, the Zodiac case. The case breakers, <laughs> you guys are the worst, came out with this suspect, Gary Francis Post, who was absolutely terrible. Their, their, their reasoning for Gary Post being Zodiac was he had wrinkles on his forehead, which matched the composite sketch. The Zodiac deposit sketch doesn't really have wrinkles on its forehead. I mean, I think the artist just added that for like realism. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. you, You can't base a case on that. That's insane and ridiculous. And also they hit us with the old, we know where Zodiac's guns are. They're buried in the, I think it was the Sierra Nevada mountains, but none of us in our case, the case breakers are supposed to be these FBI agents and retired police people and lawyers and attorneys and all these credential geniuses. Their reasoning was we can't climb up the mountain where the guns are because we're all in our 50s and we're too out of shape to go get there. So you mean to tell me you have Zodiac's guns, but you won't hire someone to go get them. First of all, I'm 37. I'll go up there right now for free. I'll I know you would. Right there by myself for free with my camera, with all my equipment. If you guys could send me the GPS of where the guns are, I'm pretty confident it's not going to happen because you guys' excuses are nonsense. So, and you would go too. You really would. I'll go right now. I'll, <laughs> I'll leave the Rick interview right now. I'll go get the guns. I'll come back and we'll complete the interview. Rick, Rick knows me. So, uh, that one was stupid. And then I'm just trying to give you the new suspects because you're at, you know you asked me that question. And I'm, then, yeah, I'm lo- I'm loving it. Inter- honestly, very interested. The, the the best one I've heard probably is is Drew Beeson's because when I was doing my suspect research, like I hadn't I hadn't heard Drew's angle when I encountered Drew, and me and him are cool now. We do a lot of shows and whatnot. But um, then so there was Gary Francis Post sucks. There, there's this new guy uh, Jack, Jack Dewar. This one came out I think this week or last week. I'm just Googling it real quick because I, I think this suspect's trash too. Zodiac killer. But this guy popped up. Uh, this guy popped up recently. What the hell is his name? The, the last one um, Tom Voigt had was Richard Gajkowski. I think I talked about him when you interviewed me last time. Yeah, uh, you brought him up. Yep. So this was Gloria du- Dewar. And I think this guy's name is. Oh, wait. Uh. No, Paul, Paul, Paul Dewar, Paul Dewar. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, quite, quite frankly. So this guy came out recently. This article is September 22nd. looks like a couple weeks ago. This guy came out. They have a picture of him dressed up like Robin Hood with a bow and arrow. And apparently this guy did archery. So we're supposed to believe that he's Zodiac. The guy's okay. skinny. He doesn't, even, he doesn't even match Zodiac's description. Rick can tell you that Cecilia Shepard and Brian Hartnell said... Zodiac was like basically five ten to six feet tall. Yep. We did this description last interview. Go see that. He's like around 200 to 220, uh, 200 to 220 pounds based on the imprints of the footprints at Lake Berryessa. He has a he's barrel chested, so he has the pouch stomach pouch coming out over his belt. This this Paul Dewar guy is this skinny little Robin Hood cosplay. You know this guy's out here larping with a, with a bow and arrow. And okay, I guess, I guess the one thing this guy had was the handmade knife. Uh, me and Rick talked about the handmade knife sheath last time. Yep. Um, so that's the only thing I see with Paul Dewar is he he can apparently do leather working and made a handmade ni- uh, knife. So apparently this woman, Gloria Dewar, I think was his wife or his daughter or something. She came out with this suspect a couple weeks ago. I'd give this suspect like a C minus being generous. He's probably more of a D minus. Um, Wow. And let me see. Gary Francis. Him, oh, so of the new suspects, the two best ones are Don Cheney, who isn't really new because Drew's book came out, I think, in 2018 or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Michael Morford. Uh, he's been on my channel. Him and uh, me and him and Black Box Ned did a, a review of the Zodiac film. Uh, Morph is really good. Morph is 
one of the probably top three suspects on Zodiac in the world. He, he, he does an awesome uh, podcast with my boy Richard Grinnell, who I interviewed last in my interview series. Uh, Richard Grinnell is ZodiacCiphers.com. Uh, Morph's website, I believe, is ZodiacKiller.net. And they do the Zodiac Speaking podcast. I plugged it for him last time, but it's amazing. If you, I'm going to do it again just because you know how I do, Rick. If you want the whole story, every detail, because the movie, for one, zooms in on a suspect that no one thinks was the Zodiac Killer. That's and true. for two, it only really focuses on it from Graysmith's perspective. Exactly. And a, little bit, a little bit of Paul Avery. I mean, Paul Avery was amazing. People have some questions about him, too. I brought those up last time. You, you know who I'm referring to when I say Paul Avery, Rick? He's I sure do. Yeah. So, so... The Zodiac Speaking Podcast. This will give you every little detail of all the little tangential things, like things like the the Santa Rosa hitchhiker murders, which uh, happened very close to the Zodiac activity. It p- could possibly be related to Zodiac. Uh, it was mostly like younger girls who were uh, found uh, in these ravines and thrown off the highways. It was like you know, hit, like hitchhikers that were by themselves and stuff. But you know, Santa Rosa. I mean, uh, even Arthur Lee Allen had a um, uh, uh, trailer in Santa Rosa, so it's kind of almost like the epicenter of Zodiac activity, right? With right along with Vallejo. Um, wow. So, Morph came out with his suspect recently, which is William Andrew McDuff. Um, he's he's a younger Zodiac suspect. Um, he, I think, he was in his twenties. Uh, you know, he kind of has big ears. He has glasses. So. In my opinion, the only decent new suspects that have come out in recent years, Don Cheney and William Andrew McDuff, they call him Mac. So, uh, you know, people have a lot of questions about McDuff with him being younger and whatnot. Um, so I'll let you take it from there. What is, what is your gut telling you about Mac? I'm curious. Mm. Are, you, are you, is he good? Is he the yeah, best? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this, he's in the right place. He, he seems to have some of the right experience. Um, I think we talked, uh, I talked briefly with him. Uh, Morph, man, get at me, Morph. I'm trying to get Morph back on the show to do a, a McDuff deep dive so I can really get the goods on him. But I know Morph is planning to do uh, a deep dive on McDuff. That'd be amazing. Uh, it's kind of the yeah. last uh, epilogue uh, episode of Zodiac Speaking because they've kind of, they really they they covered everything. Like I'm not gonna. I, I love that podcast to keep going, but they have literally covered everything, and they don't want to just like regurgitate known stuff. That makes so sense. So yep. Morph is talking about coming back on and doing kind of a um, William Andrew McDuff deep dive analysis on there. So I'm hoping after he does that, I can get him over on Zodiac Files interview, and I can kind of pick his brain on that. Um, I, I like McDuff. I'll tell you this: he's in the right place. I totally agree with um, uh, Morph's. Uh, technique for 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 locating mcduff which is called geo profiling he was essentially analyzing everybody that was like a white caucasian male that was kind of in that right location which is the northern san francisco bay area which is like vallejo area that's where you know zodiac makes the infamous phone call after um lake herman road when he kills uh david faraday and um uh betty lou jensen and, uh, you know, he, he goes and he makes that phone call. He's like, I also or actually, excuse me, it was after Blue Rock Springs when he makes the phone call. But he references Lake Herman Road. He says, I also killed those two kids last year, mm-hmm. which was late, late December, as Rick knows. Goodbye. And he does that weird goodbye that the Riddler was doing in the Batman movie. So, um, yeah, you know. The way he analyzed him, as I said, was he was looking for, like, white Caucasian males that are kind of like the right uh, description, you know, age, height. I mean, people, you know, people get super mad at McDuff because, you know, supposedly Zodiac was like 35 to 40, but that's how he looked. We don't know, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. And some people are doubting, uh, uh, you know, some people are even doubting Falk's, you know, uh, description, and, and he supposedly saw him from the closest but the problem is is nobody ever saw it nobody ever went directly up to zodiac in his face as rick was saying and tried to size it hey like i'm about 5'10 how, how tall are you zodiac that never happened it was all it was always either people sitting in cars like falc and majo right or yep. uneven ground like brian hartnell and brian hartnell is like six seven so he's not going to be able to tell if you're five six or five eight you know what i mean he's like three feet taller than you you know what i mean and that's that's on a hill on an island next to a lake 
So how good of a description, and, you know, Zodiac's wearing boots and all this other bull crap. So how, how you know, you're not going to be able to nail his hype down. Uh, people have kind of an issue with, with Macduff's uh, age and his big years. I'll tell you what Macduff changed for me. I'm definitely open to a younger Zodiac now because of suspect Macduff. And that's because Brian Hartnell said he sounded younger by his voice. Remember, Brian's the only victim who talked to him. That's right, yes. They talked to him back and forth. They had this conversation where Zodiac makes up this story about escaping prison and stealing their car and going to Mexico. He comes up with this ludicrous backstory for himself, like, why would you even do that? But, you know, that's Zodiac, right? So he said Zodiac's voice sounded younger, and I believe Nancy Slover, who took that phone call we just referenced, I believe she said Zodiac sounded younger too, like 20s, so... Once again, Rick, this is the Zodiac case. You have people saying he looks mid-30s to mid-40s, but he sounds in his 20s. Which one do you go with? You know what I mean? That's really interesting. Yeah, definitely keep me posted on that. I'm mm -hmm. really, I'm going to be really curious to see. I hope you can do a deep dive. Because yeah. if you can, I'm in it. I, I'll be I'll be watching. That's for sure. I think that'll be super interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Morph said he was down for a show. So, Morph, get at me. Let's, let's get this done. Oh, I know, yeah, Morph, do Morph does a lot of work, and he lives in Florida. They just had the hurricane down there. But uh, I'd love to get you back, Morph. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. I am I I'm I totally agree. I'm totally gay. I'd be, I'll be watching. That's for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Morph keep knows us, his shit. Yeah. Keep, a, keep us posted on that. So, that that's where we're at with the zodiac then so i and i'm thank you for the update ross because that's amazing i'm happy yep. that we can kind of keep people posted and if there's new suspects and your thoughts on it that's really interesting to me so yep. and we're moving along now so now we're going to go i want to touch on uh like i said guys this is an update so i'm we're updating with ross and uh talking about some of the cases that we talked about when i had him on the show before so the one big one that i've had many people on talking about is the david crowley case mm -hmm. which is another one that there's definitely two sides Ross to this I I sure. hear people saying that David is definitely guilty the evidence shows it and the other side saying there's no way David could have done it mm -hmm. and uh, I many times I admit I've been bouncing back and forth when I started looking at the research mm -hmm. I kind of you know I was one day I thought he was guilty and then I'd read something look at something else and then I, he wasn't so sure. I want to speak to somebody that who actually you know you've you spoke with David and you actually you interviewed him and you, you were following him when he was doing it, get doing the, the gray state trailer and, and working, giving updates on YouTube and that I want your, who like from when you know of David and that, give me, what are your thoughts? Like you actually talked to this man a few times yeah. and I'm really curious, like what are your thoughts on this case? And then we'll start there and then God knows where it's going to go from here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I just want to say a couple things on this. So, yeah, I do bounce back and forth myself. Um, I, I'm not like overall, I'm probably like neutral on, you know, whether whether David did it. I mean, uh, you know, let's well, before we deep dive this, let me. Uh, <laughs> so this is yeah, sorry for stepping away. This is that's what OK. Happens, this nope. is what happens to you when you're when you're when you're not a big true crime guy, which is what I re would have referred to myself to as like three years ago, not a big true crime guy. I was always into other th other things, more of the stuff like what Rick covers on his channel, like extraterrestrials, uh, alternate history, forbidden history, Oak Island, uh, you know, UFOs, uh, cri um, cryptozoology. Yep. That, that, that was always, I know you've covered all that stuff, Sasquatch and Bigfoot. Yep. I, that was always my bag. I was always way on the deep end. I, I'm zero to a hundred. I always went all the way in. So as far as like basic true crime cases, none of it ever really got me uh, up in, like we said last time, up until Zodiac. And I was kind of on Jack the Ripper before that. But, but yeah, that's but, another uh, interesting one. Jack the Ripper. For sure. And, and that's why they call Zodiac the American Jack the Ripper because of so many parallels. Well, this is where not really uh, get, being a big true crime guy gets you. I probably have about 30 true crime books on my bookshelf behind me that you guys can't see. I just finished <laughs> reading this last night. And this is what I want to get you into, Rick. Chaos by Tom O'Neill. This is the actual real story of, of, of the Manson uh, Tate LaBianca murders. Okay, I got to um, read that. It's, it's called Chaos, Charles Manson, the CIA, and the Secret History of the, of the 60s. I just finished this last night. And the other one I want to get you into, Rick, is uh, Son of Sam, the, the David Berkowitz, because there's some crazy stuff there. Uh, uh, the book is um, uh, The Ultimate Evil by Maury Terry, saying that there's an actual cult. And they were passing around that forty-four pistol, that that four-four. Uh, right. Pistol. 
and David Berkowitz is the only one that gets arrested. The Carr brothers both die recently after, and everybody else gets off. Just a theory. I'm not saying either this or the. Well, I saw the documentary on on Netflix. I think yes. it was, and I I've watched it like five times. Like it's Son, Sons of Sam, and actually, you can check out my interview with Carl DeNaro, David Berkowitz victim, on my channel, which is my uh, my Sons of Sam cult conspiracy interview series. Uh, and I had Carl DeNaro on there. He worked with Maury Terry, the author of Ultimate Evil, and he also has his own book called, uh, uh, what is this book called? It's called Why I Wasn't Shot by David Berkowitz. I think it's like, uh, Son of Sam. Anyway, Why I Wasn't Shot by David. Anyway, check those out. Anyway. Yeah, I'm going to put a link in the description for that, for that, uh, interview. For Absolutely. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. My interview with Carl is awesome. He's the man. Shout out to Carl. Uh, so anyway, I'm just prefacing by saying... A few years back, I was not a big true crime guy, and now look at me. <laughs> so, like, it's crazy, man. So, uh, so, so David Crowley, yeah, you know, again, like I would say, like I, I'm probably like neutral on this. The reason why I brought up chaos and, and Charles Manson is because, you know, let's just say the other group, the group of idiots that constantly troll Greg and Dan and just spout moronic BS and nothing that you guys say has any grounding. They like to think that like every case is a slam dunk and law enforcement does awesome. Well, I'll tell you a bunch of cases where law enforcement didn't do that good. Zodiac, D.B. Cooper, JFK, they lost his brain. They lost a bunch of evidence. <laughs> they botched JFK crazy. Kurt Cobain, they wiped the entire rifle down and they don't even have Kurt Cobain's fingerprints on the shotgun lying right next to him. Yep. So how am I supposed to believe that Kurt Cobain shot himself with that shotgun when you can't even show me fingerprints on the gun lying six inches away from him? And I say that to say this, same thing with David Crowley. Um, I think points that Greg and Dan have made, you know, on, on the crime scene are very good points. You know, Apple Valley police out there in Minnesota, they're not used to those kind of murder crimes. They're, they're very rare for, for them to walk in and say, oh, well, there's a gun lying next to him. And, you know, this and that and that it's definitely a murder suicide. Well, doesn't that sound a lot like. There's a shotgun lying next to Kurt Cobain, so it's definitely a suicide. And then they just rule that suicide in, in 24 hours and they don't do any actual investigation while Courtney Love is banging the coroner and, <laughs> and every single one of the officers on the police. It's so team, true. Yeah, super, super legit, super legit police work, guys. So, I mean, yep. that, those are just a, a, a couple things there. But, yeah, uh, you know... I've all I see that's the problem I've always had too with people saying like well just read the police report and that'll show you that David did it and I'm like and yeah. I'm like you okay I'll read the police report but as you just said Ross which is key and I want to make people realize that people mess up police mess up cases all the time like I yep. mean if you dive into that you're gonna be busy for the rest of your life all the time all, all the time, time. so I'll just say, say yeah. It. The D.B. Cooper, for example, 302s, you're talking about FBI agents. And, you know, me and Eric just covered this a deep dive. There's so many inconsistencies about his eye color and people said this and people said that. You're talking about people that were on the plane when it happened and they come off and get interviewed and they can't even give give the same story of, a, you know, you're talking about being inside a plane. You're not talking about a football stadium. So if you can't even get people to agree on those descriptions, like much, much like Zodiac, you have multiple composite sketches, you have multiple D.B. Cooper composite sketches. So, I mean, there, there's, you know, with them not, okay, so when Greg and Dan first started doing their lives, I think it was Dan's old channel that got deleted. I yep, was the yep. first, this is, bro, there was nobody in the Facebook group back then. I was the first person to come on live with them, and I was telling them about how I was a crowd funder on what was going to be the Gray State feature film. Right, and yep. This is actually a hilarious story because I was... That, I thought that Gray State trailer was awesome. It's st still online. You guys can Google it. Uh, Gray State concept. Trailer. I like it too. Yeah. Uh, and I was super into that. And then uh, you know th those th uh, Greg and Dan got those full versions of the of the script. Uh, just for anybody who doesn't know my my backstory and my involvement with the project, and then I'll get back into the Crowley case. Okay. Uh, I you know I was a crowd funder. I, I I interviewed. I spoke to David twice. We had a little pre dry run where him and my co host Gaz. Uh, we talked to Dave and we just kind of, you know, plotted out how the interview would go. Then we have the full two-hour interview, which is on my old music channel, Planet X Records. Uh, and then, you know, Dave and, Dave and I had uh, 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 some back-and-forth uh, emails. That 
when me and when me and Rick do a full Crowley case breakdown from my perspective, uh, I, I don't know if you could show uh, screenshots and stuff like that, Rick, but I have like some emails of me and Dave. I still have them. And then he gave me uh, access to their Dropbox, which had all the Grey State music because David actually composed that music, which is in the Grey State trailer. And uh, my old rap group was called Gorilla Alliance. It was me and my boy Mac. We were supposed to take some of that Grey State music and make, we we're going to make like a hip hop track with it. So oh, it right been. on the authentic gray state music composed by David. And we would have kind of, it, it didn't pan out for obvious reasons for anyone who knows how the rest of the story goes. But um, yeah, it was interesting. Those are just some behind the scene things that not a lot of people know since people always like to tell me how the project went and how David was when none of you guys even talked to him period or did any work with him. So there's that. Um, yeah, that's why I'm glad that I actually got you on here to chat with you because yeah. I, I want like you actually talk to him. Right, like, you right. know, and you you were following his work and, and stuff, right. and I think that that says a lot because not a lot of people that are talking about the case, me included, never t I never talked to David. I, I yeah, you know, I mean, and, what I see is most people got involved years later. Like, exactly, get, yeah. You know, that, that, that other group didn't pop up for years later, and it's just a Greg and Dan Dan, you know, uh, uh, fan club. So the, the the official group is justice for david crowley and family if you guys are on facebook go over there and you know what i mean greg and dan sophia catherine they all have really good uh, information on there greg has his book i i i think you can download greg's book on his uh website i don't know if it's free or yeah think, it's yeah. still free yep yeah he's got hard copies maybe on amazon or something yep so uh he you know that that is a real i really like his work there i really like dan's old work so you know so what happened here, right? What happened here, Rick? So that's what we're all trying to figure out. What the, what the hell happened here? I'm, I'm sitting around, you know, I throw down, I throw down some, a, a decent amount of money. I've said, I've said what the amount of money was before on streams with Greg and Dan. Um, and, you know, I get, they send me uh, some, some, actually, uh, I don't know if you can see this. This. <laughs> Reaching into the abyss. Reaching I love into, it. Reaching into my bag of tricks. This is the <laughs> executioner mask from the trailer because when you crowdfund the uh, when you crowdfund the uh, uh, back when we crowdfunded it, they, they they hooked us up with a bunch of stuff. I have this and uh, a couple other things. I had the poster framed, and I have they sent me like a big um, those ammo belts from like the machine guns. Yeah, yeah. The trailer. So they said I got I got all that stuff in the stash. Rick. Well, when we do the deep dive. Video, oh yeah, that was I didn't know you had the mask. Oh yeah, I, got, I mean that's not the I don't know that's not the exact one from the trailer. But, yeah, but I get like yeah, yeah. a bunch of copies so. So yeah, I got a lot of stuff. So uh, idiots, I'm talking to you, the people who like to troll on YouTube and Facebook. When you try to tell me how the project went and how the trailer went and how the feature film crowdfunding was going, first of all, you guys don't even know what crowdfunding is because you're idiots. Second of all, you didn't pop up till five years later. So don't try to tell me how David was or how the project was going because you guys don't know. You tried to say that I said I was involved with the crowdfunding of the trailer. Let me get close for this Rick, one, Rick. You are a fucking idiot because they didn't crowdfund the trailer. They crowdfunded the feature film. I don't even know how you could get that confused. It's pretty simple. Uh, so let's get back to the uh, let's get back to the case. <laughs> let's get back to the, there, there's some idiots out there, Rick. We got to handle it properly. So let's get back to the case. So uh, so I'm sitting around waiting. What's up with this feature film, right? There's a lot of back and forth to where David was at with the Boglio group and the MEG. Uh, how they were, uh, how they were getting, you know, what was the deal going to be, right? And essentially, I think what they ultimately landed on, a la Greg and Dan's work, was when he brought them the script, it was so long, they were looking at um, chopping it into right. a series, right. which yeah. would have been much more, you know, granted, this was 2012 when they, when they crowdfunded. So I think what they were going for back then was like a, like a solo feature film, because that was more the thing. As time went on, Netflix, Apple, Prime, Apple TV, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, and the other million streaming yep. things. Well, the, pop, the popular <laughs> thing now is 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 series. Yep. So yep. it would have made sense to split Gray State in um into like ten episodes or something like that. If you go back to my interview with David, which you can link if you want, Rick. I will do for sure. You'll hear him talk about Gray State, a Gray State sequel, graphic novels, video games. Uh, in other words, the Gray State universe. So you would have had that intellectual property, you know, just like everything else has a freaking, you know, Star Wars, name it, you know, Game of Thrones, everything has a universe now, right? The, the MCU, the Marvel universe, that's like the big example. But 
It's we amazing how that. David was thinking about that, though. Like, I found that really amazing when I listened. Thinking like, about the future? Yeah, like, he was yeah. really planning on taking Grey State. Mm-hmm. Like, he just didn't want to do this movie. He had, like you said, right. he had a whole, he wanted a lot planned around this right. whole thing. And I just think that's really, really fascinating that he was thinking that far ahead. It wasn't just thinking of the, he was planning things and he was going to, you know, expand on it. Really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, that's been brought up a lot, too. It's like, doesn't really seem like a guy who, who would kill himself and his family, um, you know. So, I don't know. I mean, just, just just before we get to the murder scene, let's just back up this thing that he was had undiagnosed PSTD and he was depressed and he was he was drinking absinthe and, you know, smoking cannabis. You know, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I know that I, one before. I know Rick is a, is a cannabis enthusiast, as am yep. I. Uh, we should we could do a whole episode on that sometime if you want, because I, I do work with some activists down here in Southern California. And let me tell you something, Rick. I've drank absinthe many, many times. Never had a suicidal thought in my life. I use cannabis quite often. Never had a, I've used them both at the same time. Never had a suicidal thought in my life. I have tried the magic mushrooms fungi. Never had a suicidal thought in my life. Now, granted, I didn't serve in the military, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be an expert on PST, PTSD, PTSD yeah, and, and yeah, P- PTSD and, and 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 issues that veterans deal with. Because I don't know. Granted, you know, both of my grandfathers were, were veterans of Marine and Navy, but so I don't know. That's not really my lane. I'm not a psychiatrist, but you know, as far as all of those theories, and then you know, Apple Valley Police wants to go and say, well, he was he was working in this dark conspiracy content and it pushed him over the edge so it's like then you have the a gray state documentary which is a complete piece of crap pretty much no resolution or thesis in that film whatsoever it's just basically a, a hit piece on david to make him look bad you know what i mean so that 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 further muddies the water and is, is a piece of crap and is totally stupid uh so i mean it's a, it's a it's a very strange crime scene um, oh for sure yeah you know it, it is it's super depressing that, you know, they say that that the issue was money problems and uh, and there was that check on the front, the front doorstep. The front, yeah. Yep. David's dad, like, I really I really wish somebody would have opened that front door and ha- have seen that because if, if the whole thing was money problems, I think that at least would have prevented that from happening that Christmas, you mm-hmm. know, whether it was going to happen regardless or not. There's one more thing I want to point out before we get to the crime scene. Okay, yep. They say that David was performing a ritual, and at the time, the story was uh, he created a playlist called Ascension yep. while he played that music for him to kill his family and his and his self to. Yep. Ascension, Ascension, and then later on, our boy Greg proves that that was actually David's Ascent, which was a USB attachment to the computer so if you ask me (laughs) that's quite a fucking leap from he created an ascension playlist to kill himself and his family to to oh wait it was just a usb attachment called ascent oops that one was a little bit of a mistake so i wasn't really pleased about that um of course you have the back door being a jar yeah that always that one always bothered me there's a couple pieces of this case that really yeah. make me wonder and that's what keeps me kind of wondering yeah. because okay, it's just so, strange so we will keep it right so it's less than an inch or less than a quarter inch open yeah not very oh, much okay be, whatever yeah. it's 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 minnesota in the winter though still odd um and then uh and then you know the missing the missing shell in, in the ceiling that's uh, a big one for me which they say that you know they couldn't see because of the christmas tree which i personally found idiotic uh so so that so that's that's where we're at. We have this quite strange, quite quite strange crime scene here. Um, the bullet yeah. in the floor is another one, which I yeah. found weird because yeah, a lot of them, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of them say that he was shooting it probably at the dog, and then he missed the dog, and then he just I'm like, okay, if he missed the dog, why would he just not go shoot it? Okay, we we can't have it both ways. We can't have it both ways. They say he's a military combat veteran who's a who, he's basically the military advisor on the Gray State Trailer and Project. He's the one showing everybody else like you know what you know what a military advisor does on on set, Rick. They basically yep, yep. make sure people are holding weapons authentically and making sure everything is the movement's authentic correct authentic yeah. from a military perspective. Yep. 
But then he is so out of his mind off absinthe and marijuana, probably neither one would even make me miss my target at the shooting range, <laughs> that he can't shoot his own dog in the house. We can't have it both ways. He can't be a military firearms expert. He's a he's a alt right right wing nutcase, but he can't shoot his own dog with like what was it a forty five? Like like come on, bro. Like what, yep. what are we talking about here? Is, is this the same? Is this the same murder scene? Is this what we're talking about? He's he's an elite firearms veteran expert, but he can't shoot his own dog from like six feet away. Like what? Yep. So yep. that makes zero sense in my opinion. Um, but. Let's back up a little bit, right? Let's just go with let's go with the police report narrative, right? Because law enforcement are set, such ex experts, they never get it wrong, right? They never get it wrong, Rick. They always knock it out of the park, especially a small town police force like this. So let's say that it happens exactly what the crime scene looks like, right? He he, he shoots his wife and his daughter and then kills himself and apparently shot at the dog with mist. Okay, it's weird, but the whole story is weird, so we're just going to roll with it. Yeah, let's roll with it. Well, the stuff that Dan Hennen dug up about the Gray State goons, as Greg calls them, it's absolutely ridiculous. These guys are, dude. I I, I wish Dan's channel didn't get wiped. I, I think I think Greg may have re-uploaded the videos on the on the Gray Stage channel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the curious case of you know Eric Sayward and the other, you know, they basically break down each one of these guys. I mean, how about this creepy weirdo? at the Ron Paul Freedom Fest when they go up to David the first time and they go, uh, hey, do you have your wife and your daughter with you? Can we see your wife and daughter? And David, like, noticeably <laughs> steps to the side. Yep, like, yep. No, thanks, man. I'm all good on that. Like, bro. You that was that weird, me. actually. You that say that to me. Uh, uh, FYI, guys, anybody who has a problem with me, I'm going to be at CooperCon in Vancouver uh, <laughs> before Thanksgiving next month uh, at the D.B. Cooper convention. You guys say that to me at one of these festivals, I'm smashing your cameraman's camera on your face. You're not getting anywhere near anybody in my family. That was that was weird as shit. If you said that to me, I would have knocked you out on camera. I don't give a fuck. So yep. that was a creepy, weird fucking thing to say, for one. David was noticeably uncomfortable with it on camera, for two. And then you dig up all this shit that, that Dan dug up on these weirdos that don't have incomes, they don't have jobs, they're all they're all constantly pestering David in the emails of like, hey, what are we doing, Gray State? Hey, can I get some more of your uh, more of your Gray State money? So is it really a mystery why David cut these people off because he wrote and directed the entire project himself to the point, uh, you know, there's all the Danny August Mason bullshit. Like we we'd probably have to do a full episode. Oh on yeah, this, yeah. Cover everything, but you know, he 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 got weird fast. Uh, like Danny, I would love to talk to you because I got a lot of questions for you, but. Doesn't seem like you're talking to anybody since since the last time you were on camera. So, um, you know, then then Dan digs up all these stuff on these guys, and it's like everything there, everything about them is all BS. They're posting face, uh, fake Facebook posts. You know, this one dude like posted, I think it was Eric posted his daughter, and it was like an old picture, and it was like an alibi for him to say that like he was with his family during that Christmas, but he really wasn't. You know what I mean? It's like he dug up some shit on these guys. And then you have them talking about they're in the house after the fact, after the crime, but before police. And supposedly, I think, what was it uh, Sayward or one of those guys had supposedly had the picture of a hand on his cell phone that he was going around showing people. So let's just say the entire let, just for sake of the other group, because you guys are so, you know, dedicated to your police reports let's just say that it happened how the police reports say it happened well then you have these other guys chris klein and all these other guys the gray state goons coming in the house and going around the house looking for something supposedly having a picture of a hand on their phone and 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 so what the hell is the deal with all that stuff you, you people don't have a have a problem with that even if david is the the would-be murderer mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. But what about all these weirdos going in the house afterwards and taking pictures and looking for stuff, probably going through the hard drives and taking who Lord knows what else. And then Klein, you know, they spell Klein's name wrong in the police reports. And then they give conflict, you know, supposedly, uh, you know, that part, Rick, where the, where the car, the car was seen outside of the house, yeah, yeah, like yeah. after the fact. And then they go and they lie to the police about when they were there and why they were there. Yep. So at the bare minimum, 
if it happened the way it happened, as the police reports tell it, we should have a lot of questions about what these people were doing in the house after the fact. Like, obviously, they were trying to steal either the footage or the intellectual property or the script. Seems like they were trying to steal something. And I'll just end with this. Later on, Danny August Mason, he tries to go back to the MEG group and he tries to re-pitch Gray State as Gray State Universe. They set up a new Facebook page called Gray State Universe. This is after David's passing, and he essentially tries to hijack the project. Uh, and they and they found Gray State Universe LLC, and they try to re-engage the MEG group, who at that point had nothing to nothing to want to do with the project. So I'm not gonna me personally like. I don't know. I think there's something going on. You know, I haven't I haven't deep dived the the the, the police reports. Like I, you know, I was actually I was thinking about coming back to the the Crowley case full time, and so I could cover it the way that uh, Greg and Dan right, and Sophia right, yeah. and Catherine cover it. Um, and, and I was even thinking about maybe doing a uh, a, a great state uh, interview series on my channel. Uh, but it kind of turned me off all the, once all those weirdos were trolling and they they started trolling me. Tried to label my name. They tried. You know, it's funny like. I tried to, this. This is hilarious. I got it. So, a, a certain idiot that we all know of who have go unnamed, who really spearheads that movement of, of trolling Greg and Dan. I, I was trying to tell them how. Listen, I've worked on more films than than David Crowley worked on. I have done short films. I I was in uh, Stronger, the Jake Gyllenhaal film, which is directed by David Gordon Green. I was on that set. That's a, that's a you know major production at the time when I was living in, in Boston. So quite frankly, my IMDB resume is longer than David Crowley's was. So I think I have a much better idea of filmmaking than any of you idiots on Facebook do. But I told them about how I crowdfunded this uh, Rob Zombie movie. It's called 31. I don't know if you've seen that, uh, Rick, but I know I think you're into horror. Oh, God, I love horror. Are you kidding me? Of course yeah, I've so, seen that. <laughs> so check out 31. It's kind of like an indie crowdfunded yeah, movie yeah. that Rob Zombie did. I, I, I was telling them how I crowdfunded that, like using the example like, yeah, I've crowdfunded, I've crowdfunded Danny Trejo projects. I've crowdfunded Dolph Lundgren projects. I've crowdfunded Rob Zombie. Like, so I'm, I'm making the argument that this is no different of how I crowdfunded Gray State, of how yeah. I crowdfunded all this other stuff right. that actually did get made because the director of these other movies didn't die in, in the pre-production process, right. like the Crowley case. And they're going, oh, and they, look, they looked up my name and they go, oh, Ross is in the special thanks. And then they looked up like what the, diff like the general definition of special thanks was. And they were like, it's when someone offers like a location or they, they lend something to the film like for the set and they were like yeah ross probably brought the donuts <laughs> hilarious joke no i told you i crowdfunded it you fucking moron that's why my name is at the end of 31 in the credits just like my name is in the bunch of other movies that i fucking crowdfunded it's no different than gray state or any other movie i crowdfunded why you people are not able to understand that when you sit, think you're such these analytical fucking police report reading geniuses makes zero sense whatsoever. I, I literally don't understand it. Much like how you guys said that I said I crowdfunded the concept trailer, which I didn't even know about because it was an indie production in Minnesota. I didn't even see it until it came out and they were running the crowdfunding campaign. And I'm going to send Rick all these screenshots because we're going to we're going to prove all this shit and finally shut the door on these idiots once and for all. all right. You guys are so fucking stupid. But this is my favorite part. The person who will go unnamed, she goes, oh, Rob Zombie? She goes, if he's so famous, why haven't I heard of him? Holy shit, <laughs> your fucking Facebook ego is ridiculous. How do you get that kind of ego with 200 people in a shitty group that no one pays attention to, and you just said a famous rock star who's also a famous movie director isn't that famous because you haven't heard of him. I don't know. Maybe because you're a 90-year-old lady that doesn't listen to metal or watch apparently watch freaking mainstream uh, big studio budget movies. Because when we talk about House of a Thousand Corpses, we're talking about Lionsgate and Universal Studios. I'm pretty sure those are bigger than your shitty little Facebook group, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Right, Rick? Oh, so, yeah, yeah. That was, that was my favorite one. Who's Rob Zombie? I don't know. He's famous for being uh, in White Zombie. He's famous for being Rob Zombie. And he's famous for directing movies like House of a Thousand Corpses and Halloween. 
you're a fucking idiot. Yep. Go ahead, Rick. Oh, no, I agree. Like, that, it's true. Like, everybody knows who Rob Z- Most people know who Rob Zombie is or have heard the name. Stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. Like, yeah. holy shit. Like, you, you really think because you have two idiots listening to you on Facebook that it makes you more famous or have more clout than Rob Zombie? Like, oh, why haven't I heard of him? Like, listen, there's probably a lot of shitty bluegrass bands that I haven't heard of because I don't listen to that. But they're definitely more famous than you. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, it's, yeah. it's like, what? Like, with these people, man, like, you, you just can't win. So uh, that was a funny one. But, yeah, just for anybody who doesn't understand how the crowd, even though I've explained this on multiple podcasts with Greg, who doesn't understand how the crowdfunding process works, I'm happy to explain it to you. You know what I mean? And uh, it, Well, you did a great yeah. job. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, how much more can you explain it than that? You can't. You can't. You but can't. Again, again, they're going to spin it in some way that Ross brought the donuts. I wasn't even on the 31 set, so <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, yeah. I, don't even, I think they filmed in L.A. I don't even know where they filmed that movie, you know what I mean? Like, Well, yeah, like, yeah, like, hey, man, you have. You've you've crowdfunded a lot of movies, that's for sure. And yeah, I'm on, I'm on IMDb. You guys can Yeah, find definitely check it out, guys. Like, I, that's what I keep saying, check it out. And uh, so, yeah, like, I definitely, like, we've kind of talked a little bit about the case, so... I'm I'm more I, what I'm curious about too, uh, Ross is when you talk to David and I mm-hmm. people I'm gonna post the link to the interview that you did with him so people mm-hmm. can see that. And mm-hmm. what was he? You said you kind of talked to him off the air and stuff like that. What what yeah. was your take of him when you talked to him? Did he sound crazy? Did he? No, he... I didn't. He didn't sound crazy. I mean, I mean, I guess I guess the whole argument people would say with with a psychopath is like it's like the movie American Psycho, and they're so good at keeping their composure, you could never right. detect they have these secret insanity going on inside their brain. Um, from what I understood, I talked to him the first time with my boy, uh, my co-host of the old show Gaz, our our old uh, radio show Planet X Radio, and. Um, you know, he sound. You know, at that point, he was deep in the crowdfunding campaign. Um, he uh, he he was. You know, they were just kind of. He was working through the uh, script. You know, that from what I understood, they were doing a lot of you know things to try to make it authentic. Like he was looking to try to get some like retired Navy SEALs oh, to wow, uh, okay. just for like military authenticity. So it sounded like a serious. You know. Military, you know, pre-apocalyptic, you know, military, you know, uh, you know, sci-fi or action thriller, uh, whatever right, you want to yeah. call it. Um, yeah. It sounded like a serious project to me, which is what got my attention and um, uh, why I wanted to be involved in it. I mean, what's kind of funny is uh, <laughs> is is Greg and I have kind of like crossed opinions on that because I was a fan of the trailer and I was super into the project. And then when that first copy of the script leaked, I was like, okay, this is like not not really what, what I was going for. You know what I mean? Because right. it didn't really incorporate a lot of the elements that were shown in the uh, in the in the concept trailer. So I was I, I thought it was a, pr- a pretty amateur level script to be honest. Uh, Greg Greg actually liked the script a lot, and he did he didn't like the concept trailer at the time. Like I th- I know he's kind of come full, full circle on it now. But at the time, like he thought it was more like fear porn, like kind of propaganda, which I can see that angle, of course. Me too. Um, yeah, me too. So it's kind of funny. Like I was really into the trailer, and then uh, the script, I was like, is not really for me. Uh, which is why me and Greg have those uh, those deep dive analyses on on, on the script. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know my angle on the case, I'm really more into the Gray State project than I am in the actual Crowley family. You know. The, murder case because it's just too fucking depressing you know i'm, I'm more on the filmmaking artwork side aspect. right that but makes I, I sense i got no problem getting into both i got no problem getting into both you know because you can obviously see my true crime background now um i really like greg and dan's work and and sophia and Catherine. um but yeah that's that's kind of where i'm at so as far as yeah i mean he seemed deep into the production of the project now a lot of those people who were involved in the concept trailer were dropping off at that time yep. because they brought nothing to the table you know what i mean david was gonna pitch this to a major studio or a major streaming network and they were gonna hire all professional actors and probably uh you know i don't, I don't even think he was because he directed the concept trailer i don't even think he was gonna sit in the director's seat you know there was talk of of major hollywood directors yep, taking, yep. taking the helm of that um, as well as producers. So he probably would have been more like a producer, writer, consultant in, in the end, had everything come full circle. Um, but he seemed, uh, you know, everybody, you know, everybody uh, always described him as ambitious, dedicated. Now I know, 
I know the eight. Have you seen A Gray State back when it was on Netflix? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a document, the mockumentary. I call it. That was so one-sided. I've it's had trash. a problem. So they basically yep. pitch him as this like charlatan, you know, uh, who's going in there and trying to dupe the producers, and and it's like, you know, the way I look at it is. When you are a indie indie filmmaker and you have the chance to get in front of those people, you pretty much have to do whatever you can to yep. get your thing. Like this yep. isn't Martin Scorsese when he made Taxi Driver or Sylvester Stallone when when he made Rocky One and and everybody like assumed Rocky One was going to be a failure and all that. He didn't even know if it would work himself. So when you're basically on that other side and you get in front of those people that are going to get you your funding, you essentially have to do whatever, you know, you can. So yeah. I, didn't really, I didn't really look at it as like, oh, David's a genius con man, and he's going to he's gonna totally dupe the conspiracy uh, 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 community, which is what they all say, you know what I mean? He just, he, you know, he, he, he took all of our money and ran, which, you know, honestly, to be real with you guys, 60 Gs ain't going to get you very, very far. Like, I could spend that real quick if I wanted to, you know? I got I got expensive tastes. So, uh, you it's know, true, they got 60,000 yeah. 60, uh, from, from the from the crowdfunding of the concept trailer. And what that's considered is that's startup money. That's money for David to maybe finish writing the script and maybe some some travel back and forth to California or whatever producers he's, he's going to talk to. So, I mean... You know, it's quite funny when they say it's this big sixty thousand dollar conspiracy. Like, I bet you, sixty thousand, dude. Like, uh, uh, people like you know who Bruce Campbell is, Rick. You're, yep, you're a whole yep, fan. Yep. Okay, guys like Bruce Campbell get paid like thirty k a day on set. Exactly. So you're talking about sixty grand is like two days of Bruce's salary on a short film. You know what I mean? Yep, so yep. like, in, in filmmaking, sixty G's is nothing. You know, uh, people. God, one guy. I talked about this with Greg before. One guy tried to say like. Oh my God! Like, dude, like, like, ten million dollars, twenty million dollars, thirty million dollars. Like, go look up what John Wick. You know, John Wick became this super action trilogy, um, uh, massive franchise. Great movie. Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> and they're working on John Wick Chapter Four now. I love that movie. John Wick One was essentially an indie budget yep. that they almost didn't finish making. Yep. So Keanu Reeves put put up his personal money to finish the project. We're talking about John Wick. We're talking about John Wick. It's freaking huge now. Yep. When they made it, they didn't even know if it was going to get finished. You know what I mean? It's so, true. Like, yeah. When you start throwing around millions, trust me, bro, it goes fast in filmmaking. You oh, know I, I, mean? I can so, only imagine the budget. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, I think, like, wow. And then I also, I've heard people say that David was, like, doing this movie just because he wanted to soak the conspiracy uh, crowd kind of thing. Yeah. And, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I get upset with that because uh, we're trying to paint David as – like to, in the, my opinion is of course he's going to be trying to make a movie that he can make money on i mean like what who what's the point <laughs> yeah, otherwise who trying that's to be your job. Here? like i mean he's got a family he's trying to become a big he wants to get big in hollywood yeah he's going to make money he's going hey. to want to make money that's not a bad thing i hey I, rick have you ever met a carpenter before yeah, oh, of course. Do you know a lot of carpenters that build houses for free? Like None. they go buy all the wood and the concrete yeah. and they just sit there. And they're like, here, you can have it. Like, not a one. Why? Why do all that work? You know, for like that's that's I don't know. I don't, I don't know where that came from. If it was the conspiracy community or if it was the other idiots. But like, <laughs> well, come on, bro. Like, it, like. None of these directors, Francis Ford Coppola, or like he, he's another one, right? Like, you know, Coppola is this epic genius director of, of Apocalypse Now and the Godfather trilogy. Uh, this, this, this movie that he's been working on for like 30 years called Metropolis, he's putting up all the money himself. Yep. Now, granted, yep. you're not going to be able to do this unless you're a Coppola or a Spielberg or a Lucas, but he's putting up all the money for his next movie himself because none of the studios would pick it up. And, you know, obviously he owns a winery. Dude is super rich. He's a legend. He's like a, a God tier director. So he's 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 doing it himself. So the only time you're ever going to like see that happen is when you're like a legendary director that's at the end of your career and it's a passion project. Yeah. And you're like, all right, I just want to make this for me. That's the only time you're ever going to see this. 
Why why should David show up every day on set for the project that he's been, you know, his baby that he created and he's just going to hand it off to these other people and he's like, "Okay, I'll just be a consultant and I'll stand around while you guys film my project and yep. you don't have to pay me anything." It yep. doesn't make any sense, you know. Exactly. That's the way I look at it too. It's not a bad thing to want to make yeah. money. Like that yeah. like I mean, that and he did. So Right. We're definitely going to have to. I'm. Thank you for your. I, I'm really happy, Ross. Thank you for get, telling us that about what your thoughts on it. And I definitely yeah. want to do a deep dive with you. Yeah. Someday we will really set aside time to do a deep dive on the Crowley yep. case and yep. that. So, but I mean, for the sake of time, I don't want to dive in this one. We did. We kind of touched yep. really on it. I love what you were saying. I like th yeah. that you got to speak with David and interview him, which is, you yep. know, I think that's great. You're one of the only people I've talked to that actually did talk to David for any amount of time or interview him. So that's a cool. I'm glad I got. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, final note on it. We, we emailed back and forth quite a few times. I, uh, my old rap group had a song called order app KO. I don't know if you ever heard hip hop before, Rick, oh, but yeah, uh, for sure. The artist, uh, cannabis who had a gold record. He was yep. on Howard Stern. So he was friends with Mike Tyson, uh, myself and my, my partner, Ryan Mack. We have a track called order app KO featuring cannabis. And, uh, I actually sent that to David and, and like, Literally on our interview, David was like, I don't personally listen to hip hop. He's like, but I respect hip hop. Yep. And that's all, that's all I want to hear from people. If you're not from the, the hip hop community, like I used to be like, we're not we're not looking to have every one of you guys being a hip hop fan if you don't understand it. But I really like David's opinion on that. Like, so I sent him that track and he was like, hey, do you mind if I use this for uh, <laughs> right the State promos and shit? And I was like, please do. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same way with heavy metal too. I always tell people you don't gotta love heavy metal, but at least respect it. I mean, like yeah. a lot of these oh, guys yeah. get a bad rap and that they're not talented and stuff. And I'm like, come on, man! Like yeah, you may not like both. the music. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm 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 hardcore hip hop heavy metal. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, for sure, music lover. And, and and final note on Crowley: Why would he waste all his time going to all those Ron Paul? festivals and speaking about you know anti-establishment dissent he's writing all these speeches and he's putting himself in the public like it seems like a huge waste of time for a guy who's going to write a creative script and then later on try to pitch it for a feature film um you know granted uh him and danny were on uh at the alex jones i'm sure you've seen that yeah, footage saw that yep and so it's like why why do this massive campaign? Why do the crowdfunding? Why even make the concept trailer? Like, unless you're one of the uh, CIA false flag psyop people, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. All I'm seeing is a dude that's putting in a lot of work on a script yep. and, and wasting a lot of time. And final note on filmmaking, people who don't understand the script writing process. Uh, have you seen the movie Point Break, Rick? I love Point Break. Okay. So the dude. Well, it depends what version, because there's the original. original. Okay, Rich, I love the original. Yeah. The dude that wrote Point Break, that dude was waiting tables in California for years, and they and and they were like, "Hey, dude!" They were like, "Your script got picked up," and he's like, "Nice." He was like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna get my foot in the door, like a gray state situation." Right? <laughs> yep. And then they were like, "Oh shit, sorry, man. We lost the studio. We lost the producer." So that dude got stuck waiting tables for two or three years after writing Point Break. Point Break is freaking huge. Yep. It's Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves. You know what I mean? So. People who just don't understand the script development process, they'll give you these stupid crackpot theories on the crowdfunding and the, and the gray state script. And what I see when people do that shit is you're an idiot. It, because of the gray state concept being conspiracy related, you know, yep, they want to yep. say all these weird fruity things about it where, guess what? It still had the same script development process as every other film you've ever seen. So, yep. you know, I would say it's akin to that. Like, you don't, I bet you didn't picture the, uh, the point break writer waiting tables for three nope. extra years before his film got picked up, but he was stuck being a waiter because his film hadn't got his uh, script hadn't got fully processed yet. So like, yep. you know, there's a lot of stories like that in Hollywood, dude. There's a lot of stories like oh, that. Oh, I can imagine. And it's crazy because I, I can't even imagine what it takes to write a script. Right. Like I did the, the, the it takes years, bro. Oh, I, geez. I, I don't even know where to I've start. I've written one, bro, and it sucked. And uh, <laughs> I on on my writing app, I've had I've had like three, four hour writing sessions where I was like, man, I'm pretty confident about those scenes. That's pretty good. Forgot to save it. Boop. Wiped the entire thing and be like, OK, there's four or five hours of work yeah. gone. That's wow. one small example. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, so. I couldn't even imagine writing a script. And I, I've read David's scripts. I've read all of them. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I read I mean, them both. I, I like that 2013 version yes, better with the yeah. uh, the Stephen King shit, as uh, as Greg says. Yeah, and it's and uh, I mean I love the trailer, the concept trailer. I love that. Yep. That's what yep. I you know I really like that. So 
because that's kind of like what I like looking into. So I was really hooked when I yeah. saw that. And so, sure. yeah, we're definitely going to have to do a deep dive, Ross, on this and uh, show some evidence in that. But let's to wrap this up, because I know you got only a limited amount of time. I want to also touch on the Cooper case. Yep. If there's any what I want to, you know, let people know a little bit about the case. If you yeah. haven't heard about it, I'm sure people have. Uh, yeah. And is sure. there any updates on that case? Uh, Where's your research taking you? Just give, the, give us the goods. Uh, yeah, as far as like, uh, you know, D.B. Cooper, like I'm pretty new to this one. I'm kind of just I'm, I'm kind of being ushered in by guys like my boy, Nikki B., Drew Beeson. I had Eric on recently. Um, I've always had an interest in this since I've heard about it. This kind of goes uh, tier and tier with Zodiac because Zodiac's like 68 to 69 and Cooper is 71. Uh, just to give a brief synopsis, if you guys haven't seen Unsolved Mysteries or the In Search of with Leonard Nimoy back in the day, uh, Thanksgiving Eve, 1971, a dude uh, goes from uh, Portland to Seattle. He buys a ticket. He tells them his name is Dan Cooper. We, mm -hmm. need to, we need to hammer that home because the D.B. Cooper thing is a mess up when it hits the news wire. The media reports D.B. Cooper. And then forever, the rest of eternity, he's known as D.B. Cooper. But the name he actually gave was Dan Cooper. Okay. So there, there really is no D.B. Cooper. That's just a messed up thing. And now it's called D.B. Cooper, which some people think sounds cooler okay. so um uh he goes he buys a ticket for twenty dollars he, he said i'm just going to do a brief synopsis for your audience that may not know okay um he he gets on the plane it's called flight 305 the case is called norjack and he sits down uh he passes a note to a flight attendant it was very common for men to uh, uh just disrespect flight uh, flight attendants back then hand them phone numbers hey baby give me a call you know that type of thing so it's so common that she doesn't even think twice about the note she just puts it in her pocket he he, he makes it noticeable that he's looking at her he's like ma'am you you better have a you guys ma'am you better have a look at that note i have a bomb so wow. she's like oh shit so she looks at the letter uh sees what he says like this is a hijacking i have a bomb blah 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 she's like Come sit next to me. He, he he tries to get on last. I think one person may have got on the flight after him. He sits in the back. Um, didn't have his sunglasses on at first, but later puts on his sunglasses for the entire flight. You know, semi-disguise. Um, cool guy wearing a suit, mid-40s. So there's a couple composite sketches of him out there. Um, the way the whole thing goes down is, you know, he, he, he essentially shows her this bomb. She radios up to the cockpit. All these different things ensue. Later on, they uh, they 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 refuel. He he allows everybody to get on. He 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 requests meals for the uh, flight crew that will be stuck on the on the jet with him. So it doesn't really sound like an asshole guy. Uh, the flight attendant sitting next to him said he was polite. You know, he wasn't described as like a a bomb wielding maniac waving guns in people's place. Mm -hmm. Everybody get down, or I'm gonna I'm gonna blow the plane. You know, uh, when 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 about it very like articulately and intelligent. Didn't really make any mistakes. Got his note back. Uh, he eventually, you know, this is the only unsolved skyjacking in, in U.S. history. Every other one is solved. So wow. later on, he gets the 200K um, ransom money. He skydives. They, they give him four parachutes. He requests circulated American currency uh, in, 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 in a knapsack. Well, they give him regular bank bags that have an open top. He gets pretty pissed off. What the fuck is this? I didn't ask for an open bank bag. I asked for a fucking knapsack. The guy's about to go. Fucking, <laughs> he's about to go jump in in a drizzle on Thanksgiving Eve in the Northwest in in a rainy you know semi storm in, at nighttime. You know what I mean? So yeah. He takes he takes the the bomb with it. A lot of people think the bomb is fake. Um, the only thing he leaves behind is his tie. Uh, and then they do supposedly have a hair that was on the on the on the chair. Um, and there's a lot of other, you know, weird um, um, uh, evidence things that me and Eric cover in our interview, if you want to link that. I will um, link it, yep. So he jumps off fairly close to what they think is the Portland area. Is never seen again. Uh, several years later, I think five or $6,000 of the ransom money is dug up on what's called Tina Bar. I'm actually going to Tina Bar soon with Eric, so hopefully I can vlog or get you guys some pictures and footage. That would be uh, awesome. Private property, so don't go up there and be an idiot, guys. Uh, you can't go up there unless you know someone. Sorry. So I'm going to be up there with Eric. It's going to be epic. Um, and where we're at on this is a few a few years ago, the FBI, uh, there's this crew called the Citizen Sleuths. 
uh, which was set up by Special Agent Larry Carr. I don't know if you've seen him, uh, uh, Rick. He's in some of the uh, the D.B. Cooper documentaries. Yes, yep. Uh, he took over the case, I think, in the 90s or something much later on, but he was, like, on point with it. He, he's the one who kind of went public with starting to leak some things to the D.B. Cooper community online, um, documents and information and such, just to try to see if, like, at this point, this cold case has been dead in the water. Maybe the private citizens can can help get something going. Yeah, like, yeah. like you were saying before about Zodiac, does anyone know someone, did anyone talk type of thing? Well, the FBI lets Tom K. analyze the tie, and what they find is... Uh, titanium, antimony alloy, and all these other what's called rare earth medicals, microscopic particles, which essentially says that D.B. Cooper possibly worked in one of these aerospace facilities in the aerospace industry or one of these, uh, me- you know, at the time, titanium was not like popular at the time mm-hmm. like it is now. It was So a lot of people were thinking Boeing or maybe one of these major major companies like that, you know what I mean? Some something like, along that lines, the right. aerospace industry. Okay. So um, they analyze that. They come up with those. Uh, m- m- the, the, I think the DB Cooper case is going to get solved soon, guys. There's some really solid suspects. There's going to be a lot of news coming up soon. That's why I keep plugging uh, CooperCon2022.com. If you're into the DB Cooper case or true crime, it's up in uh, Vancouver, Washington. It's going to be epic. They got CooperCon T-shirts. Head over to Eric's website, ericulis.com or coopercon2022.com. Get some tickets. It's going to be sick. I'm going to be there. It's going to be a couple of Zodiac heads there. Uh, probably the next episode on my channel is going to be with Nikki B. Uh, he's kind of one of the kind of dark horses of, of the Cooper uh, community, but he, he really knows his shit. He's one of the top guys. Uh, so that's going to be epic. So where do these rare metal, uh, rare earth metal particles lead us to? This company called Rem Crew which is Remington Crucible. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you, I think you're a firearm enthusiast, Rick. Yep, so have you yep. heard, of, heard of the company Remington? Oh, uh, for sure, company yeah. Company. So at the time it was uh, Remington Crucible. I think later on it's bought and sold a few times. Remington splits off, it becomes Crucible Steel. Uh, they essentially narrow, narrow it down to they had the patent for this titanium antimony alloy. Oh, so interesting. It Unless D.B. Cooper pulled this tie out of his ass at a thrift shop, <laughs> if it was indeed his tie, it was like a J.C. Penny tie that I think retailed for like two or three dollars at the time, so it wasn't anything special. Um, it would lead us to this company, Rem Crew. So it's heating up, guys. If you're into this uh, this D.B. Cooper case, uh, definitely definitely check out Eric's videos on YouTube. He has some really cool stuff about the drop zone and uh, and the flight path being off and all that stuff. Essentially, what you have in D.B. Cooper is these two narratives. You have the FBI narrative, which goes one way, as me and Rick were saying, law enforcement doesn't get it right. And then you have this other story that's starting to come out now, which has a lot of inconsistencies in it. And the D.B. Cooper case is is crazy, man. It drives a lot of people nuts just because now you have the particles on the tie, the the money being found at Tina Bar. um, Nobody really knows what the deal with the money at Tina Bar is because uh, it there's no explanation for it showing up there. You know, the, the, there's the dredging theory that it got stuck on the propeller of one of the dredging boats. That's what got, I heard. Yeah. Then it got flipped on. But but a lot of people don't buy the natural uh, the natural thing. Like you know, even even the way the Columbia River dumps out into the ocean. Like yeah, sure. D.B. Cooper could have got stuck on the propeller of the plane, fell in the river, and got launched out into the Pacific Ocean. But how does that explain the money getting there, right? So, you know what I mean? There's just, it, 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 it's, it's another, another thing kind of like Zodiac um, where you just have like all this random information coming at you and it's right. like, where the hell does this one go? But uh, I'm telling you right now, uh, much like Zodiac, I do have some information on the, on the, uh, uh, on the, uh, the inside information on the D.B. Cooper case. I can't say what it is. All I can say is I think it will be coming out soon. Um, it's not my information. That's why. I, that's why I can't just. You know what I mean. I can't just go and do that. But uh, there's some really solid suspects coming up. Um, all of the suspects are not very good. I mentioned earlier the case breakers. Breakers suspect Rackstraw. Of course, there's Kenny Christensen. I really like uh, Drew Beeson suspect uh, Ted Braden. Mm-hmm. If, if you ever get Drew on again, Rick, you guys should do uh, 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 his. Um, his uh, D.B. Cooper book, uh, the, the Ted Bray. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, for sure. I'd love Para- to. Paratrooper of Fortune. That one's epic. Um, really like his work there. So, yeah, D.B. Cooper's a tough one because, uh, you know, 
I guarantee you that guy never talked, you know, and a lot of people don't even think he spent the money because they have all of the serial numbers of the bills and nothing ever. None of those 20s, you know, me and Eric were talking about this on my show. Uh, none of those 20s ever showed up in circulation. So like I was going to ask you that or yeah, yeah. They, they got nothing. They I got was going to ask you that if they ever I think that's yeah. really where I thought was has any of the money that. It would have been if he spent it. It would be in circulation somewhere. Yeah, nothing that's ever been reported in wow. circulation. Of course, you have Tina Bar, but that's it. And uh, and you and I don't know if you've seen. Uh, well, uh, Eric has one of the Tina Bar bills. He showed it on yeah, my yes, show. Yes, that was um, interesting. Yeah. Super degraded, dude. There's like there's like nothing left of it. It's like you know what I mean. It's like from what was like a full bill. There's like you know what I mean. Like like that much left of it after it was degraded. You know, in the sand, uh, buried underground on the river for for all that time. So. Uh, yeah, D.B. Cooper's crazy, man. I, I love that case. And, you know, it's a little bit more lighthearted than some of these other cases because no one died. So That's I mean? so true. Well, thank you so much, Ross, for the updates, man. I uh, yeah, Awesome, man. man. Like, before I let you go, I just want to ask you to let everybody know any information they want, where they can find your channel, uh, anywhere, yep. any information. I want to give you the floor for the next minute or two. Promote sure. your stuff. Let everybody know where they can find your stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the main place to find all my true crime work is YouTube. That's youtube.com slash Planet X Film. My channel is called Planet X Filmworks. We do the Zodiac Files uh, uh, series, which part three is out now. Part four, the Gavita Beach murders is coming soon. I'm almost done pre-production on that. So we're going to go up. That's going to be our farthest drive. It's about five, six hours away from where I am now. So I really hope you guys support that one. I, I remember when I filled you, I was t uh, talking about that one last time yep, about yep. Um, Santa Barbara in 63. I know a lot. I've uncovered a lot of stuff on that one now. And I, that, when I talked to you, I was just going off the cuff. Like now I've actually done my deep dive of the article. So I have some, I have some amazing stuff on that. Zodiac Files episode four coming soon. We also have the Zodiac Files interview series. I have the Sons of Sam Colt interview series, which I was just talking to uh, Rick earlier about Berkowitz. Um, we got to do a dive on that too. Yeah, no, we should definitely do that. And I want to get you, I want to get you into Manson too, because this, this chaos shit is crazy. Um, and, uh, have this, that, and then I've got the DB Cooper, the Cooper Chronicles. I'm going to be getting Nikki B on for that in a couple weeks. Um, hopefully have some big Cooper world guests that'll be coming on my show for that. So all of those series are on my YouTube. You'll find me on Twitter at Ross Tracy PXF, uh, and then planet X media dot Blo no, what is it? Yeah, planetxmedia.blogspot.com. That's where we post, like, it's just basically a feed where we post everything. Um, so, yeah, best best bet, get at me on Twitter. But, yeah, yeah tap in on uh, on YouTube if you guys are on here with uh, Crip Rick. And make sure to subscribe to his channel as well. Thank you. And that's how you find me. I have, whatever you want to do next time, bro. If you want to do a D.B. Cooper deep dive, we can do Crowley. We can do whatever, you know. Oh, uh, I've, yeah, I would love to do that. I would and definitely talk about the Son of Sam because that's one yeah. I've been looking at, too. And I haven't actually interviewed anybody on that case yet. So that is definitely something I'm looking forward to doing. So I will get you on for a deep dive, my friend. I'm going to get you on Son of Sam, and I'm going to get you on uh, Manson. So your homework assignment is you got to read Chaos, and then if you want to do Son of Sam, you got to read The Ultimate Evil. Okay, I uh, will do. I'll take you up on that offer, and as soon as I do, I, we will get you on to talk about it. And the rest of you guys can check those out too. All right. Thank you so much, Ross. If you want to wait in the background for a second, yes, sir. I, uh, just let me close off the video here. I just got to say goodbye to everybody, and then uh, – I'll come back and chat to you offline. So thank you so much, though, Ross. You know you're always welcome back here. I really enjoy getting you on. Absolutely. Uh, so you're always welcome back. So just wait in the back there for one second. I just got to say bye to everybody, close up the video, and then I'll uh, be right back with you. Okay, my friend? No problem, sir. All right, I'll be right back, my friend. Well, there you go, guys. What an amazing interview. I was looking forward to this one for a couple weeks now, guys. And Ross, as I said, he is always welcome back to the show. He always brings amazing information. I was excited to get these updates because he's always diving in and getting amazing guests on his show, and they're always uncovering new things. And so I wanted to get him on just to give us all an update on that. So I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you check out the first interview I did with Ross. We really dive into these cases and get more in-depth with them. So I just wanted to do this one to get kind of an update of what's going on and get his, uh, his thoughts on the David Crowley case because he was actually – uh, part of that and the crowdfunding as he explained so and and spoke with David so I wanted to actually get uh, Ross on to speak about that so thank you so much guys I appreciate all of you watching it, it's great to be back doing a video interview again so I'm glad to be doing that lots of great interviews coming up in the future got lots of stuff planned if you like radio don't forget I always like to like let you guys know that you can find me at Revolution Radio which is at freedomslips.com 
I got two shows there a week. Saturday evenings, I'm in Studio B from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is the Crypt Rick and Jonathan show. That's with my new co-host, Jonathan Wright. And then you can also find me on Mondays from 6 to 8 p.m. in Studio A. And that's just the normal show, Crypt Rick, I've been thinking. So please, guys, check me out at Revolution Radio. If you like radio, I have amazing guests there, too. So thank you so much, guys. Have yourselves a great uh, evening, if you're watching this in the evening, or a great morning, whatever it would be. Stay safe, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care, guys. Are you interested in the paranormal? Murder mysteries. Cryptocurrency and thought-provoking interviews. Then check out Crypt Rick's I've Been Thinking on YouTube. Or every Monday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Studio A at Revolution Radio. Freedomslips.com Welcome to the Crypt. Ha <laughs> ha.